So thank you for this meeting and for giving us the opportunity to speak. Uh, Copacy Families Europe is a European NGO. We represent the interests of families and our main area of focus is social policy, uh, gender equality, non-discrimination, poverty. But the more narrow focus, which br brings us to this table is financial inclusion, making sure that all families have access to affordable, accessible and quality financial services. And as a civil society organization, we often face the same arguments when we face policymakers. It's who will pay for these measures? There's no money. This prompted us to deep, dive deeper into understanding micro, macroeconomics and monetary policy and examining the role that the ECB plays in all of this. Um, and our recommendations in that regard can be broken down into two categories. Plan A, which is recommendations to solve the problems within the current system, and Plan B, recommendations considering alternative debt, uh, systems to a debt-based monetary system. Now, the Plan A is, um, you know, many recommendations led us to consider the, 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 Kate, the work of Kate Raworth and her donut economics model, for instance, and are aligned with what you'll hear from other NGOs and civil society organizations today. Um, however, we believe that um, our, some of our organizations believe that uh, these do not address the major shortcomings of a debt-based monetary system. And with this regard, the ECB's role, even if this consultation shows a willingness to engage in a bottom-up dialogue, policy tools at its disposal are invariably top-down, and in the sense that any new monetary program, be it quantitative easing or future ones, has to trickle down through a number of institutional layers before hopefully reaching the real economy and people. So it's equivalent to trying to replenish the ocean by dumping water on the top of Mount Everest. It's very likely it will freeze on top of it, get stuck in a dam, diverted by various irrigation systems before it reaches the ocean, and by then it might be too late. So this echoes your call on member states just a few days ago to distribute the 750 billion without delay. Now, unfortunately, these programs uh, have sparked something like the everything bubble. That's what many economists say, increases the price of assets, which increases inequality because it benefits uh, mostly the rich people. And with regards to communications, because you were talking about that, we believe that ultimately it's more like a psychological game that you're playing to ensure that people continue to consume and borrow steadily to prevent this debt-based system to implode. So your strategy of injecting this extra liquidity has been said, um, it's just, uh, it takes the form of debt invariably, which means the burden of restarting the economy is always on small and medium-sized enterprises and people that have to bear the risk for jump-starting this deflated economy. And if it fails, then they're in over-indebtedness. So hopefully that's why we're switching to Plan B uh, also and considering Plan B recommendations. And in this regard, we have started exploring the potential of alt alternative solutions such as universal basic income or the relative theory of money by French economists Stéphane Laborde and others. Uh, and we need uh, a new monetary system which is bottom-up, truly democratic, and where citizens are at the heart of monetary creation, which is resilient to shocks, can tolerate fluctuating demand, and is not dependent on growth and nevertheless fulfills the essential mandate of the ECB of price stability. So to finish, my question to you is, um, have you heard of such alternative monetary theories? And if not, would you be interested in an open dialogue on the pros and cons and feasibilities of such options? So we look forward to working with you on the strategic review of the ECB's mandate in order to ensure that the economy is at the service of society. Thank you very much.